There are some rules for scalar multiplication and matrix addition which are quite simple to remember because these rules are the same as for regular numbers. So let's look at these rules. So listing these rules A and B will now be arbitrary matrices but with the same dimension n by m and the Greek characters alpha and beta will be arbitrary scalars. The first rule is that matrix addition is commutative. That is, if I want to add two matrices, it makes no difference in which order I add them. The proofs of all these results presented on this slide will be given as exercises later on. But the basic idea is that this result simply follows because addition of real numbers is commutative. We can make a simple check in R to confirm that I do get the same result if I add them in the other way and do Y plus X. The next result is that scalar multiplication is commutative. That means if I do a scalar times a matrix that would be exactly the same thing as post multiplying the matrix by the scalar. Again the proof of this follows from the fact that multiplication is commutative for real numbers. Let's check it. 2 times x gives me this and x times 2 will give me precisely the same thing. Next, matrix addition is associative. This means that if I would like to add three matrices, A, B, and C, it makes no difference in which order I add them. I can do as the left hand side says, begin by adding A and B, and to the result add C. Or I can begin by adding B and C, and to the result add A. I will get the same result. The proof of that really falls from the fact that addition of real numbers is associative. And you can easily check this in R. The next result is that scalar multiplication is also associative. So if I want to multiply a matrix with two scalars, it makes no difference in which order I do it. I can start by multiplying the scalars together and then multiply the result with the matrix or I can multiply one scalar with the matrix and multiply the resulting matrix with the second scalar. You will get the same number. For example, 4 times x, which is 2 times 2 times x, is precisely the same as 2 times and then parentheses to let r begin with this calculation 2 times x that will give you exactly the same result. We also have two distributive laws. The first one tells us that scalar multiplication distributes over scalar addition. For example, say that alpha is 2 and beta is 3 then it tells us that if I do 6 times a and A is any matrix, I will get the same thing if I do 2 times A and to that add 3 times A. Scalar multiplication is also distributive over matrix addition, like this. For example, if alpha is 2 and I want to do 2 times the sum of two matrices A and B, I can just as well do 2 times A and to that add 2 times B. There's really no point in remembering these formulas, it just basically tells us that scalar multiplication and matrix addition works exactly as we would expect. What we can do with the real numbers, we can do with scalar multiplication and, and matrix addition as well. Now the reason for stating these sort of obvious results is that when we define matrix multiplication, the multiplication between two matrices, some of these rules will no longer hold.
For example, it will turn out that matrix multiplication is not commutative. That is, if you multiply two matrices A times B, you will not get the same result if you do B times A. But it's nice to know that at least these basic operators on matrices, scalar multiplication and addition, there are no surprises. Finally, let's look at subtraction and linear combinations of matrices. We can use the definitions that we have for addition and scalar multiplication by minus 1 to define subtraction. And we simply define A minus B as A plus minus 1 times B. Doing minus 1 times B will reverse the signs of all the elements of B. Then we do A plus this matrix with reverse signs. Using this definition we recycle the old definitions of addition and scale multiplication. That way we don't have to give the rules for matrix subtraction. It will just follow from the rules of addition and scale multiplication. But in effect it simply means that we do subtraction element by element. So here's an example. I subtract these two matrices. I simply do it element by element. For the first one I get minus 2, minus 1, that's minus 3 at the top left of, on the right hand side and then cycle through the other three. We can also define what we mean by linear combinations of matrices. So for example if I have two matrices like this I can define a linear combination of these two matrices. And a linear combination simply means that I take one scalar multiplied by the first and I add another scalar multiplied by the second. So for example, 2a minus 2b, that's a linear combination of a and b resulting in this matrix. So just keep in mind when you do this kind of linear combination of matrices, you simply do that linear combination element by element.